All right, before we get started, really quickly, make sure that when you find the myth that you think is the, the best one, that's not what I want to say. Uh... Hey, what's going on? Shane at Shane Hubbard Fit, where we teach you how to lose weight without counting calories or doing an exercise you hate. Today, we're gonna to be talking about 15 different diet and weight loss myths that are absolute garbage. And we're actually going to explain some of these that have some merit to them, but are usually exaggerated in the news or online. All right, let's go ahead and get things started with number one. If your weight increases on a daily basis, you are getting fatter. Now, daily weigh-ins can be a struggle for lots of people. It's probably a big struggle for you, which is one of the reasons why you're watching this video. And I want to reassure you that a daily change in weight is not a reflection of gaining body fat. It's just a reflection of total weight change. So to keep things simple, you really aren't going to gain a pound or two pounds or whatever the scale might say in a single day of fat. So you can't gain fat that quickly. I mean, you'd have to eat a tremendous amount of calories in order to gain that much fat. And, and most people aren't going to be binge eating every single day. So I wanna reassure you that if your scale weight on Monday is let's say 200 pounds, and let's say that on Tuesday, the following day, it's 205 pounds, that's not five pounds of fat. It's gonna be water and probably the food that you ate. So fat loss and fat gain is a somewhat slow process. So don't freak out if the scale goes up, you know, three to five pounds in a single day. That's just gonna be water and it's just going to be, you know, the food that you ate the previous day or the previous night. All right, number two is going to be avoid sugar because it is inherently fattening and if you eat any sugar, it's gonna turn into fat. I wish it was that simple because then it would be really easy to avoid sugar and that way you wouldn't have to gain fat, but there's no research that shows that sugar is inherently fattening. A lot of times what happens when you eat sugar is those calories can add up very easily, meaning that when you eat sugar, it really doesn't fill you up. So it's easy to eat a lot of it. And when you eat a lot of it, that total amount of calories can add to your total amount for the day, which can then push you over your total calorie intake for the day. So this is the, the first example of what it means to understand that total calories are what make you fatter or leaner, all right? So a calorie deficit helps you lose fat, a calorie surplus adds fat to your body. Now, sugar can't do that all by itself, but because it's so easy to overeat, it can be a contributing factor. So as long as you're ma managing your calories in some you know, fashion, you're not gonna have a problem. You can eat sugar while you're losing fat. All right, number three is going to be eating a low fat diet is a good idea for losing weight, right? Just like the sugar example, fat is not inherently fattening. Your body doesn't just look at fat and go, oh, it's already in the form that we need to store it in, let's just put it in there, all right? Fat calories, so calories from fat, work pretty much the exact same way as calories from any other food, meaning that they can be stored or burned, you know, just like anything else. So you don't have to worry about eating fat and it specifically going into your fat cells. Anytime you overeat any kind of calorie, which includes proteins, carbs, and fats, yeah, that's gonna get stored as fat. But at the same time, it has to be more calories than you are burning throughout the day. So it has to be greater than the total amount of calories you're burning per day. So just like the sugar example, if you keep calories from fat managed in a very well you know, fashioned way and it's easy to keep track of and you're not overeating them, you can eat fat in any ratio that you would like. All right, number four is probably my favorite, which is you should not eat carbs because they make you fat because insulin, all right? So this is probably my favorite one because everyone these days believes that insulin is like this terrible thing. And little do you know that insulin is actually a super important part of being alive. Like without insulin, you'd be dead. It's one of the reasons why type one diabetics have to inject insulin because without it, they would die. So there's this idea out there that because insulin is a fat storing hormone or a calorie storing hormone, that all it does is store fat and, and, and by eating foods that, you, that create an insulin spike, you're naturally going to get fatter. Keep in mind that insulin and hormones and how they interact with our body have more to do with the behavior and the influence of our behavior than they have to do with uh, specifically with the calorie in versus calorie out. So think of calories in versus calories out as the top most important thing and that everything underneath that can influence that top number. So calories in versus calories out is up here. And then what your hormones do is down here. Now this can definitely influence total calories, but it doesn't uh, supersede it in the way that in, uh, if insulin is a certain way that it makes calories in versus calories out a completely 
uh, you know, different formula or a completely different priority. So understanding that is super important. Now, they've actually done studies where they've compared a group of low insulin levels or low fasting insulin to high fasting insulin. And as long as they were in a calorie deficit, it doesn't didn't matter which group you were in, you were still going to lose body fat. So you gotta keep in mind that while insulin is an important factor for blood sugar and behavior, like I'll give you a perfect example, um, after a really high carb meal, I just wanna go to sleep. And a lot of you might actually feel that way too. So it can definitely influence your energy throughout the day. But if you're keeping your calories controlled and you're in a calorie deficit, the amount of carbohydrates you eat doesn't matter. All right, number five is gaining weight after doing exercise. So I've had quite a few people reach out to me very frustrated that they started a exercise routine, specifically weightlifting routine, and after a week they've actually gained weight, sometimes three to five pounds, if not a little bit more. And so they've asked me, well, what's going on here? Should I stop my exercise routine? What am I doing wrong? One thing to keep in mind that's really important is that when you're exercising, you are breaking down muscle tissue. And this is more specific for weightlifting, but I would imagine that in some capacity, this is also going to, be, uh, is going to happen with cardio type exercises. So when you're lifting weights, what you're doing is you're creating little micro tears in your muscle that then you know, have a uh, inflammation response. And as a result, and this is all natural by the way, this is the process of building new muscle and, and getting leaner. So this isn't something that you need to avoid, it's just the natural process of things. So as a result of lifting weights and having these micro tears, what ends up happening is, is that your inflammation goes up, a natural response to you know, these micro tears. And part of inflammation signals the body to retain water, all right? So it can kind of help with the healing process. So you are going to re retain some more water, and as a result, that's going to increase your total amount of weight. Now, if you were to, to break all that different weight up that you've, in, that you've gained in that time that you've started lifting weights, you would notice that the majority, if not all of it, is water retention, okay? So it's nothing to freak out about. It's a natural process of things, so long as you're keeping your calories in check. Now, there is one thing that can happen when you are lifting more weights, and that is your appetite can increase. So you have to be very careful with how many calories you're consuming and making sure that you're managing that in a way that you keep your calories and maintenance to a deficit range, all right? Because if you're not managing that well, you can very easily overeat and be in a calorie surplus. So those are some things that can happen, but in on the whole, if you're exercising, you're lifting weights and you're in a calorie deficit or you're at least a calorie maintenance, then you'll be fine and it's just water weight. All right, number six is going to be gluten-free diets can help you lose weight. So there's nothing special about a gluten-free diet for losing weight, although it can help with symptoms of irritable bowel syndrome or digestive issues. If you're someone who feels bloated, a lot of times you might have a sensitivity to gluten. So I would definitely go and try to get uh, checked to see if you have a sensitivity to gluten or celiac disease. And yes, that can help you lose weight because you know, honestly, if you're cutting out calories you're eating from gluten and not replacing them with other foods, it's simply just a calories in versus calories out factor. So there's nothing special about uh, gluten-free foods or gluten-free diets for losing weight. But if you have a, you know, sort of a, a sensitivity to gluten, um, then I would highly recommend removing it, seeing if you feel better, and then going from there. But there's nothing special about a gluten-free diet for losing weight. All right, number seven is ketosis is a special pathway to fat loss heaven. All right, this is a fun title. And this is probably my second favorite one. So there's a lot of talk out there that ketosis is the gateway to fat loss because if you're burning fat, then obviously that's the goal for everyone. The problem with this is, is just because you're using fat as a fuel source doesn't mean you're inherently burning more fat than somebody who is not using fat primarily as a, as a fuel source. So remember that calories at the end of the day are the only thing that matter when it comes to weight loss, weight gain, or weight maintenance. So if you're in ketosis and you feel great and you're thinking, well, that's why I'm losing weight, not really. Um, honestly, if you feel great in ketosis, it just means you're burning fat for fuel and your body really likes that, but it still comes down to the calories you are consuming. You can still be in ketosis, eat more calories than you burn and get fatter, all right? That, that's, that's totally possible. It's not very easy to do because fats and proteins tend to be pretty filling uh, for a lot of people. And if you like a low carb diet or you like a keto diet and it helps you stay adherent to a calorie deficit, then by all means, go for it. I'm not uh, trying to shit on you know, uh, ketosis or the keto diet. If it works for you, it's sustainable, you enjoy it, all things are good to go, then absolutely you can do the keto diet and be in ketosis. But just remember, there's nothing special about ketosis 
compared to other forms of weight loss or other forms of uh, burning calories, uh, so long as you are in a calorie deficit. All right, number eight is intermittent fasting is a perfect and guaranteed system for losing weight. All right, so like a lot of these other ones, it comes down to calories. One of the things that intermittent fasting does really well, and this is how it helped me before I really knew what was going on, is intermittent fasting just you know, very simply takes out an entire meal. And an entire meal can be anywhere between you know, 400 to 600 calories. So if you're taking out an entire meal and you really don't change a whole lot of other things, that will put you in a calorie deficit. Now, there's, there's other things on the health side of things when it comes to intermittent fasting that can help, and we'll talk about that in a different video. But when it comes to weight loss, the only reason intermittent fasting works is because it removes an entire meal, which, re which means it removes calories. Now, if you were to condense all of your calories between lunch and dinner, and you were to eat the same amount of calories that you burn, meaning that you would basically be at a standstill between the calories that you burn and the calories you eat, you wouldn't lose weight. So there's nothing special or magical about intermittent fasting, but for a lot of people, it makes it really simple to cut out calories, start losing weight, and be in a calorie deficit. All right, number nine, detoxes, cleanses, powders, whatever you wanna call it, all these teas and wraps and things, can help you lose weight. So if we're just looking at weight on the scale, let's not confuse weight with fat, okay? If you step on the scale after a detox and you lose seven pounds, most of that, if not all of that's going to be water weight. Now, if you are in a calorie deficit as a result of these, these detoxes, that's something else to keep in mind. So remember that anytime something forces you into a calorie deficit, whether it's fasting or a detox, that's gonna create weight loss, okay? so. What happens when you do a detox is they usually kind of package it in a way that looks really fun and like, oh, take this cleanse or take this drink or drink this tea. And all that tea is doing is it's replacing an entire meal. So just like fasting. So, you know, if they say, hey, instead of having breakfast, drink this lemon, cayenne, water, and you know, goat's milk, whatever, and that's less calories than you usually consume in the morning, that's creating a calorie deficit in sort of the same way that intermittent fasting is. So please, when it comes to these detox pills, realize that all they're doing is creating a calorie deficit. They're not telling you that though because they want you to believe that there's something special about their detox, when really there isn't. All right, number 10, water can help you lose weight. There's been some talk about water helping with weight loss, and what I want you to understand is that when you're drinking a lot of water, one of the things you're doing is you're displacing calories. So let's say that you usually have a snack between meals and someone tells you, hey, instead of having that snack, why don't you just drink water, and that will help you lose weight, and that's all they tell you. And you start drinking water instead of the snack, and let's say you have two snacks a day that total you know, 400 calories. Well, right there, by replacing your snack with water, you've taken out 400 calories, which again is gonna influence your calories in versus calories out, which is gonna create a calorie deficit for you. So there's nothing special about drinking water for weight loss other than it displaces calories that you would otherwise eat. Now there has been some evidence to show that water can help increase your uh, metabolic rate. Now I don't believe that it's gonna be a substantial amount, so I, I'm not gonna you know, talk about it in depth, but the other thing that water can do is help manage your appetite. So if you normally are eating something but drinking water instead, and you actually really do need to be hydrated, then that can help a lot with appetite. So as you can see, it, there's no direct relationship between water and weight loss, but rather how it affects your eating behavior throughout the day. All right, number 11 is going to be eating snacks between meals is going to make you fat. So the only way in which eating snacks between meals is gonna make you fat is if you are eating more than you burn. Big surprise, right? So if you, let's say you can eat 2,000 calories a day and keep your weight the same, and snacks, you know, whatever they might be, doesn't matter, puts you over that amount, then yes, you are going to, to gain weight. But it's not the snack's fault, it's just the extra calories. So you know, managing your calories based on you know, whatever it is that you're trying to, to meet, so some people, it's gonna, you know, everyone's gonna be different when it comes to how many calories they need to eat a day to lose weight. But how you manage your calories is totally up to you. We'll talk a little bit later about some myths about meal frequency, but how you manage your calories throughout the day can be, you know, can be a wide range. There's can a lot of uh, vary there. Like you can do whatever you want pretty much uh, within a, a calorie deficit. You know, some people eat two meals, some people eat six, whatever works for them. As long as you're managing those calories, it should be no big deal. Now there's some studies that show that snacking actually helps people lose weight because it helps them manage their hunger and their appetite. And there's other studies that show that if your calories aren't being managed, snacking can put you over the edge. So again, it comes down to personal responsibility over manage your total calorie intake. 
All right, number 12, like I talked about in number 11, we're gonna be talking about the different types of meals and meal frequency having an effect on weight loss. So, you know, I think it was like early 2000s, maybe late 90s when, you know, there was big talk about eating six meals a day will help you, you know, burn body fat because it stokes your metabolism and all this, you know, fun lingo. Um, that's not true at all. So that was a myth that got started by bodybuilders because bodybuilders would eat six meals a day. They would, you know, lose body fat when they were cutting for a show. And so the, you know, through the grapevine, basically, it got out there that six meals a day can help you lose fat. Well, they've actually done studies on meal frequency and if it affects weight loss and it doesn't. So you can eat six meals a day, you can eat one meal a day. It doesn't matter as long as you are in a calorie deficit. So if you work better by eating, you know, three, you know, big meals and maybe two snacks. So, you know, a total of six different eating times. If you like to do one meal a day, whatever works best for you, so long as you stay in that calorie deficit should be your priority. So make sure that once you have your calorie deficit, how you break up your meals is what works best for you. All right, number 11 is eating breakfast speeds up your metabolism. So this has not been founded in research. There are very few things, if any things, that actual, actually will speed up your metabolism. And there's nothing special about breakfast. There's even studies that have been done to see if skipping breakfast speeds up your metabolism. And so far, the research that I have seen, that can actually happen. And again, it's a short-lived boost in metabolism. It's not like this permanent increase that you're gonna have for the rest of your life. But as you can you know, tell by now, Metabolism is influenced by a lot of different things, and there's no one specific thing that you need to do to boost your metabolism. Although I would say that building muscle and exercising can definitely help with that, especially when it comes to you know your physical activity and things like that. But you know there's nothing special about breakfast, so if you feel obligated to eat breakfast because you've been told in the past that it boosts your metabolism, and you're eating even though you're not hungry, feel free to skip breakfast. Okay, there's nothing special about missing breakfast or eating breakfast do what works best for you. Again, when it comes to total calorie intake and the calorie deficit and how that influences your weight, that should be the most important thing, not necessarily when you eat. When you eat and how much you eat at any given meal should be up to preference. Again, so long as it stays under that calorie deficit umbrella. All right, number 14, skipping breakfast can boost metabolism. So there is some research out there that shows that fasting can help boost metabolism by like 14%, which is great and everything, but it's not gonna make a huge difference in your weight loss efforts. The biggest things that are going to make a difference in your weight loss is going to be a calorie deficit and consistency. Okay, so you have to be consistent with your calorie deficit to see weight loss over time, especially, and I would recommend, if you wanna see fat loss, right? Weight loss and fat loss can be different, and I wanna make sure you understand that you wanna lose fat, not just weight on the scale. Don't feel obligated to have breakfast if you're not hungry in the morning. Wait until you're hungry later in the day, and then space your calories out how you want them. Okay? You don't have to eat breakfast to lose weight. You don't have to skip breakfast to lose weight. Again, it's a preference thing, so long as you keep everything underneath that calorie deficit umbrella. All right, number 15 and our last myth. You should eat back the calories that you burn through exercise. Right. I don't know where this got started or who brought this idea up in terms of you know like this even being a thing, but you should definitely not eat back the calories you burn through exercise. Okay. Now I've I've experienced this myself when it comes to tracking your intake. Uh, My Fitness Pal, uh, unless you turn this feature off, will um, take the calories that you burn from exercise and add it to your total intake for the day. So let's say that your intake is 2,000 calories and you burn 500 calories through exercise. Your new calorie intake is 2,500 calories. Now this is kind of silly because the whole idea with weight loss is that you're trying to eat a certain amount of calories within a deficit. What you should be doing instead, and if you have downloaded my uh, fat loss calculator, which I'll put in the, the description below in case you haven't, one of the things you should be doing is factoring your activity level on average into your calorie intake for the day already, all right? Because if you're doing that, you don't even have to worry about the exercise you're doing. Because imagine this, trying to track the amount of calories you burn and the amount of calories that you consume is gonna take a lot of work. You might as well just hire someone else to do it, right? It's, it's a lot of math. If you were to factor in your activity into your intake, you would, much, you would be easier because all you have to do is track your intake. So please do not eat back the calories you burn through exercise. It is a very easy way to get in a vicious cycle of consistently just eating and burning the same amount of calories, keeping your weight the same. You're not gonna burn any more fat and it can get, a, get into a very confusing cycle. So if you need help with that, by the way, I can understand it's a little confusing. Feel free to reach out to me and I'll help you out with it. 
All right, so that is my video for today. Thanks a ton for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more videos just like this, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then hit that bell too if you wanna get notified when new videos come out. Thanks a ton for watching today and I will see you in a future video.